Can you go over how dual spool engines are more efficient? Absolutely. This is a great topic. In order to discuss it in detail, we have to go through the variations of spools and compare it to something. So single spool, dual spool, and triple spool. Majority of engines nowadays in modern aviation are either dual spool or triple spool. What is a spool, you ask? What are you talking about, Stig? Well, it's the, the way the engine works, the way it rides, the way it spins. These engines ride on shafts, the blades that is. Everything from high pressure compressor to low pressure compressor, high pressure turbine, low pressure turbine, and sometimes intermediary. The shaft runs through the center of the body of the engine. Each spool spins at its own rate, independently. One section powers the other. I made a whole video about engines uh, explaining how they actually work. But the technology keeps growing and advancing, so engines are getting more complex. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, let's go in chronological order. Single spool. Good old classic Allison J35 engine. Check this thing out. This is a disassembled portion of it. Uh, this is where you would have the combustion section. Or the burner cans, they used to call it. An axial flow through compressor jet engine. Very simple design. Single shaft. Consisting of a 11 stage axial flow compressor and a single stage turbine. With the option of afterburners, of course. Highly regarded and used in military. This engine was an epic engine, a powerhouse. But the point being, it rode on a single shaft. Low pressure compressor, high pressure compressor, and turbine all rotated on one singular shaft. You have to remember, this was the technology back then. This is why the engines were so long. They needed to compress that air thoroughly to get optimum performance. Not only that, you had stator vanes all across the casing of itself. The J35 went through many variations and it also got installed on a variety of aircraft. Most notably on the Republic 884 Thunderjet and the Northrop F89 Scorpion. Epic jets. Check, check those out. They're beautiful. And a bunch of experimental stuff. But the problem was they were fuel guzzlers. Inefficient. Not meant for long range or commercial use. Welcome everybody to a dual spool engine, one of the variations of Pratt & Whitney, the JT-8D. This thing is one of the most iconic engines ever built. I'm gonna go a little bit biased on this one, probably the last, very last best Pratt & Whitney engine ever built. Don't hate me in the comments, but this thing was a workhorse. An improved dual spool design and now had become a medium bypass engine. It's still an axial flow design, with a six stage low pressure compressor and a seven stage high pressure compressor. Also going through a variety of upgrades and changes. This engine revolutionized efficiency. At the top of its game, it was equipped on the Boeing 727, the 737, the DC-9, the MD-80. Even though it was not FADAC controlled or EEC controlled, still mechanically controlled, the thing ran perfectly fine comical joke was if it wasn't leaking oil it was probably out of oil old school mechanics know that joke but technology progresses and evolution of engines keep on going welcome to the cf6 the modern day and age or growing into the modern day and age high bypass turbo fans these were the predecessors that gave birth to this pinnacle of engineering one of the most sophisticated engines to be ever developed the genx an absolute powerhouse and a behemoth. Comes in two variations. One developed just for the 787 itself and one for the 747-8. The one you're looking at here is on the 787. It's very unique because this engine itself has a bleedless system. That's a whole other topic. But my point is that the engine is still a dual spool engine. Same concepts as before. High pressure turbine runs the high pressure compressor low pressure turbine runs a low pressure compressor which is the fan itself these are not my graphics i got this literally from ge all credit to them now you ask yourself what makes this engine so special well not only does it have an extremely big bypass ratio and efficiency for fuel and oil but the engine itself as i said before is a bleedless system no bleed air needed to start it's an electric start engine even more down into the details, what makes this engine really special is how the blades spin. GE developed a very unique system called TAPS, Twin Annular Premixing Swirl, and it's encased into the combustor. 
even before it does that, it actually has counter rotating blades. Yes, that's right, you heard me right. They rotate in opposite direction. This optimizes the fuel burn and the efficiency and the airflow through the engine. Combine that with its beautiful design of architecture with its fan blades that are composite and a 10 stage high pressure compressor feature. This thing is just a work of art. What can I say? But time to move on. Welcome to the triple spool. The one, the only, the legend itself, RB211 Rolls Royce in the house. This is what gave birth to triple spool engines. Pretty much every high bypass Rolls Royce engine you see, it came from this. The development of this engine was by almost i could say by spite they wanted to create something different and trust me they did they said we want to introduce more efficiency to the engine we want to increase compression increase perfect burn create more thrust and trust me they did this engine is bulletproof i've worked on the rb211s the trend 700 and the 800 what you're looking at here is the latest variation the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB, their pinnacle of technology. So here comes the technical knowledge. Why triple spools? The simple answer is difference in design, but the technical answer goes a little bit more deeper. This is where it goes a bit my pay grade, but I have a little bit understanding in it. This is due to efficiency regarding aerodynamic design versus mechanical design. Just because you have more of something does not mean it's better by the way. What Rolls-Royce decided to do is introduce an intermediary pressure stage, the IP. The IP stage allows the engine to compress the air even further, optimizing airflow. This is where you get your N3, but it always comes at a cost. If you have to give something, you have to take something. You want to introduce efficiency, that means you have to gain more weight. The engine becomes heavier. This is why dual spool engines are more heavily based with variable bleed valves and variable stator valves to sustain same level of efficiency. But once again, it's a difference of design. Both are at the top of their game and both efficient. But now Rolls-Royce is doing something very different. Welcome to the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan. This engine is still in development. They have been testing it for many years at this point. Everybody's waiting for the product. They are claiming that it's going to be the biggest and the most powerful engine in the world. With its very unique design at this point. This is on the Rolls-Royce website. Please feel free to go visit it. It actually comprises no more three-spool engines. It adapted the Pratt & Whitney geared turbo engine. I guess we can call this uh, 2.5 spooled because the intermediate pressure stage or the intermediate high pressure stage actually runs the gearbox their planetary gearbox this is an incredible design i mean i really hope to see this i have very little knowledge about this engine only from what i read online but yeah incredible engineering well that's about it folks thank you all for watching and thank you all for listening to my banter Hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for the next one. Later!